uh, I get 51.78 uh, I get nine ooh, that's unusual there oh well it's all relative to 140 so actually these are actually going to be the same because it's 140 times the 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 same the same thing so we're actually getting the same there so it's 9.32 uh, 44.25 is perfect and 31.44 these are our expected frequencies okay now let's we can actually start the hypothesis test now okay so what we've done is we know what we've observed there's our observed these guys here are what we expect to happen if if they're independent of each other okay this is what we'd expect to happen yeah if this variable age was independent to the variable uh, brand of mobile phone okay don't forget this is age and this is brand this is age and this is brand okay so if they were independent they're the expected frequencies that we would expect okay now the chi square test the test statistic the chi square test statistic tells us to take our observed frequencies take away from the expected frequencies to square them and they're relative to the expected frequencies okay and that's the sum of these across all possible cells okay so we need to do this particular calculation as well at some stage in a moment yeah okay but let's let's start our actual hypothesis test so don't forget the hypothesis test has five has five steps okay so this is our hypothesis test the hypothesis test uh, stage one is to define the hypothesis okay the hypothesis the null position well if you think about it we've built our expected frequencies okay uh, assuming that these two variables are independent so actually the null position is okay is the null position is uh, the two variables okay so our two variables okay our two variables are independent independent okay which means that the alternative position is that the two variables the two variables okay are dependent okay, okay. so that's our that's our that's our our, our hypothesis okay uh, independent means there's no relationship they're dependent means there is a relationship okay and actually you can see where this concept of dependence and independence is coming from it's coming from that that particular perspective that we set up earlier on okay in other words our assumption from the multiplication rule that the two events are actually independent of each other because that's how we calculate our observed frequencies okay so that's our hypothesis part two step two is the significance of our test Okay, the significance in other words what are we willing to accept in being wrong what probability are we willing to accept in being wrong when we reject a null hypothesis when we shouldn't have okay in other words if we do reject okay what am i willing to accept in being wrong after making that exact exception in this case we're going to set alpha is equal to 0 0.05 okay and this is a this is a right tail test okay this is a right tailed test and i'll tell you why now in a second that's a consequence of the test statistic now the test statistic step three our test statistic okay the test statistic is as i said a moment ago is chi squared is equal to the observed frequencies minus the expected frequencies squared in other words it's the distance between our observations okay but more importantly it's the square difference between our observations okay each observation the each observed and expected it's the square difference between them relative to what we'd expect to happen and it's the sum of those particular square distances those relative square distances yeah across every single cell uh, or every single cell within our contingency table now to do this what we need to do is we need to create a new table okay which is our our table which is our chi squared expected minus the, obs the observed minus the expected so we need a new table okay? so i'm going to do this table here we have 20 to 30 30 to 40 we have 40 to 50 okay they're the age categories we have vodafone okay we have htc and we have apple okay and what we'd like to calculate for each one of these okay is the is the observed minus the expected squared in other words we'd like to calculate this particular thing here for each one okay so let's do once again let's do this cell here okay well our observed is 20 okay so for this cell here let's say cell star okay uh, the observed is 20 
minus the expected, which is 15.34. And we need to square that, and it's all relative to the expected, which is 15.34. Okay, now when we do that calculation, okay, let me do it here, we have it's 20 minus 15.34. Okay, that gives us a value of 4. 4.66. I need to square that. Okay, that gives us a value of 21.74772. I need to divide that by 15.34, which gives us that gives us 1.3. Sorry, 1.42. So this is 1.42. And once again, let's do this cell here, double star. Okay, so I'm just going to say star star. It's the observed for this cell, which is 50. So it's 50. Minus for this cell what we'd expect, which is 44.25 to be squared, relative to 44.25. Okay, so we need to calculate that. In this case here we have it's it's 50 minus 44.25. That gives us that. We square it. Okay, that gives us that, and we divide it by 44.25 to give us a value of. Uh, 0 0.75 to two decimal places. So this is 0 0.75. Okay. Now I've done all of these these particular calculations. Once again, I've done them in Excel. Okay. So actually, what we actually have is we have something that looks like this. Okay. So I have 1.42. That's for the first one. That's perfect. I have 0 0.69, which rounds to two decimal places, is 0 0.70. Uh, I have 2.68 here. 2.68. Okay. I have 0 0.01, I have 2.28, okay, 28. Uh, we have 3.28, 3 